Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, like introductions, introducer said, uh, my name is Adrian Salaya, and I'm a PhD student at uh, Rice University. Uh, I'm advised by Dr. Beatrice Riviere uh, at Rice, and then uh, Dr. David Fuentes at MD Anderson, uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. And uh, what I'm really, the gist of what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, using this notion of multi-grid methods from numerical linear algebra to uh, design new CNN architectures, and specifically these. FMG net or full multi-grid net and the WNet architectures that came from this and uh, how we use them to uh, improve upon existing architectures for medical imaging segmentation. All right, so to give you a quick summary, right, I'll talk about multi-grid methods, give you kind of a gist of what they are, how they're similar, how they're different from convolutional neural networks. I'll go into the details of the FMG and WNet architectures as well as uh, the data that we're going to use. It's going to be a brain tumor data, which we'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, talk about some of the results, then conclude and go into some future work. All right, so if you're not familiar with them, geometric multigrid methods, or GMMs for short, right, are used for solving uh, linear systems of the form, right, some matrix A times some vector U equals some data F, right? And the thing to remember about this system is that it's related, these variables are all related to each other by some kind of geometric grid. So think uh, discretizing a differential equation by the finite element method or finite difference method, uh, you'll get some kind of geometric system like this. And the key thing to remember about these is the Geometric multigrid methods rely on constructing the series of uh, grids to appropriately solve uh, or at, at appropriate resolutions to solve this particular system or approximate a solution to it. And as most of you are probably familiar, right, convolutional neural networks also kind of take this approach of uh, learning features at a certain grid, uh, coarsening it via pooling layers, learning more features from that, and so forth, uh, until you either classify something like you do in this little example or produce some kind of segmentation. And one of the, I guess, most notable uh, similarities that you have here between these multigrid methods and uh, convolutional neural networks is this uh, similarity between this V-cycle multigrid method uh, and the classic unit architecture, right? The, the gist of the V-cycle here is you start with your matrix in your system, you uh, apply some iterations of a basic uh, linear solver like Jacobi or successive over relaxation, uh, produce a residual, right, and then restrict and smooth, restrict and smooth until um, you go down to the ba the bottom layer, you uh, solve it, uh, solve something directly, and then from there it's uh, correcting or adding, like you can think in a skip connection, uh, and essentially, quote, decoding this. And you have the same kind of idea uh, for this unit architecture, right, where we take an input, we'll convolve it, pull it until we hit a bottleneck, and then we'll uh, start upsampling, add our skip connections, and then uh, produce an output. All right, so uh, let's go into the FMG and WNet architectures, which kind of builds on that similarity between that V-cycle uh, and UNet architecture, right? So uh, the V-cycle, like you saw earlier, right, pretty much just goes straight, uh, straight down, straight up uh, with this notion of a skip connection, which they call corrections in that case. Uh, but you see in panels B and C that there's other more sophisticated versions of this V-cycle uh, called the W-cycle uh, and the F-cycle or full multigrid cycle here. And the reason we care about these is, right, they, they tend to produce uh, quicker, uh, they, they tend to be uh, converge faster, right, than their V-cycle counterpart, right? And you can kind of see that here in this uh, image on the right here, where we plot the number of iterations for this, uh, these different uh, cycles versus, right, your residual. And you can see, right, the FMG, the F or full cycle and W cycle uh, tend to converge a lot faster. And that was the idea behind this, is can we create architectures that mimic this behavior, this more complicated behavior from these W cycles and F cycles to produce more accurate uh, segmentations. All right, and the way these are gonna look, uh, if we just say we, is, is we're gonna parameterize this by going, uh, uh, by looking at the, how, how deep these networks go, right? So for depth one, they all look the same, but as we start increasing the number of pooling operations, uh, you can start to see a pattern emerge that differentiates these from our classic uh, UNet architecture. So right for the full multigrid, it's gonna follow that uh, kind of zigzag pattern you've seen. And then the W cycle, well, we'll kind of have that W shape there with some intermittent features between those two uh, main, main uh, spikes there. 
right? So what about uh, our skip connections? So UNet was famous for introducing, right, this notion of uh, taking features from the encoder and putting them over and concatenating over to your decoder. And we'll do the same thing for the full multigrid and WNets here, as you can see here. And then the last thing we'll do is talk about these peaks, right, which you can kind of see highlighted in red. It might be hard to see. But uh, we'll also go ahead and add skip connections there. And that's pretty much uh, these architectures, right, in their full context here, right? So uh, let's talk about the data for a second. We're going to test these on uh, 3D brain tumor segmentation data, right? Uh, it's uh, multimodal, so uh, different uh, channels here in our input, and we'll have uh, multiple outputs, uh, namely, right, the tumor core, an enhancing tumor, and uh, the whole tumor in, in itself. Right, uh, we, we'll evaluate our uh, our predictions using the dice coefficient, right? Kind of your classic measure of overlap ranges from zero to one. And then we'll also use uh, this Hausdorff distance, which you can think of as measuring the maximum segmentation error, as well as an average surface distance, which is again, uh, the average error along the surface of these, these tumors, right? We'll use a five-fold cross-validation here for different depths of these architectures, as well as some pretty standard hyperparameters. Um, all right, and as for our results, all right, so we'll start by looking at what happens if we test this on, say, depth equals three. Uh, and you can see here, right, uh, values highlighted in bold are the best, by the way, that this FMG uh, architecture, right, clearly wins here, right? And you have some pretty significant improvements, uh, especially in these Hausdorff distances uh, between, say, the UNet and this FMG net architecture. Uh, and while the WNet doesn't do as well as the FMG net, it still does have some nice improvements over uh, your classic uh, UNet architecture. All right, it's a little less clear which of these two, FMG or WNet architectures, uh, is the winner versus uh, the UNet here, or well, versus each other, not the UNet here, uh, for depth equals four, but again, you still have a nice improvement versus your classic architecture. Uh, and the same story for depth five, right? Uh, the FMG and WNet still are producing some nice, nicer results here uh, versus the UNet, uh, and it's again unclear which of these two, FMG or WNet architectures, outperforms uh, each other. All right, just to give you a visual sense of what our results look like here, you have from left to right our ground truth, right, the FMG net predictions, or a slice of them at least, a UNet prediction and the WNet prediction. Uh, from top to bottom, you have better predictions and then worse predictions. Uh, and you can see, right, for these better ones, they all kind of look about the same, but what I really want you to focus on are these kind of worst case scenarios here. And you can see that the FMG and WNet architectures are uh, in some, in this top case here, avoiding a really large error, it's kind of hard to see in this kind of bottom part of the, the brain there. And they're also capturing a lot uh, uh, more uh, features here, such as the, the label two that you see there. And then for the bottom case, you can see that the uh, FMG and WNet architectures are actually capturing a lot more detail. They're not quite uh, perfect predictions, but again, they're doing a lot better than the uh, UNet architecture. All right, so just to uh, conclude, uh, I think what this work really is about is trying to use this rich theory and history of geometric multigrid uh, methods, right, to kind of guide the design of CNN architectures, right? Both of these methods uh, rely on using series of grids, and, right, like I said, we have a lot of decades of work on GMMs that I think would be valuable to consider when uh, thinking about uh, convolutional neural networks, especially in this medical imaging space. Uh, one thing that's not clear from our results is which of the two, FMG or WNet, are better than each other. Uh, I think to do that, our future work, to determine that, right, you're going to need to test this on more data. Uh, we're thinking liver data, uh, maybe other kinds of problems outside of medical imaging to kind of get a better sense of which of these architectures are actually outperforming uh, the other. Uh, lastly, uh, we did design a pretty nice framework, which we call the MIST framework, to kind of fully automate this whole process of uh, ingesting medical imaging data, running pre-processing, uh, as well as uh, training the, the architectures and stitching together these images. Uh, the QR code will take you to the repo for that, and then you have it up here, so I'll leave that up for a second. Uh, lastly, just like to acknowledge uh, my advisors, uh, Dr. Revere, Dr. Fuentes, as well as my collaborators, co-authors, uh, MD Anderson Rice and the uh, National Defense Science Engineering Fellowship, as well as the uh, Latinx AI Workshop. Thank you guys for putting this together. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for you today. Very nice presentation, very interesting results. Just very curious, what's your intuition behind the better and worse results? Is that tied to the depth? of the grid in the results that you showed? 
So it's not really clear in that case, right? You saw, if you actually were to take a look at the table side by side, you'd actually see the depth three tends to produce actually better results in this case. But um, that relationship between, say, depth and accuracy is still not 100% clear to us. For other uh, segmentation problems, like, say, liver segmentation, uh, uh, deeper networks tend to do better. But in this particular case, uh, it just happened to be that lo uh, lower depths were better. Um, yeah, still not clear to us what that relationship is. And uh, there may not, it may just be data dependent or, or whatnot. So we I don't see. know yet. So you just, you just sorted them by appearance of the segmentation of the image. And the better ones were on the top, the worst ones were on the bottom. But the relationship between that and the methodology is still unclear? Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So I was uh, wondering if you got a chance to compare these against like segment anything, you know, more powerful models that are freely available that <clears throat> you can tune with little data. I mean, is, is this, um, I'm just wondering how, if you're able to compare out uh, of the box, Sam say, versus this. Uh, yeah, so uh, not in this particular paper, right? I think we were just kind of interested in like a one-to-one -one comparison here, but those results um, are pretty close to what you'd see in say like the NNU net architecture, which is considered uh, state of the art. They're not too far off. And I think with a little more tuning uh, and changing up maybe some of those uh, layers, you could probably either meet it or exceed it in that case. But uh, yes, we did to answer your question, but not not in this work. Uh, that's kind of some follow-up uh, tables we'll probably make later. So. Um, and maybe I, maybe I misunderstood the dimensionality of the problem that, that we're working with, but was something like, for this Im imaging data, were, was something like thin plate splines considered as you know, to, to be used in this realm, why go straight to GMM? Uh, sorry, so say, uh, say that one more time. I'm not so, I don't understand question. So there's other methods that were, that are historically used for imaging data, such as like thin plate splines and mm -hmm. those type of regression, like non-parametric regression type methods for this three-dimensional data, right? Um, and they use a lot of discretization un under the hood in order to approximate these, you know, complex functions. Yeah. So I guess maybe a simpler way to, to ask is like, did you look at some of those non-parametric regression methods and compare against here? Um, why go straight to GMM? Uh, yeah, I mean, so no, the, I mean, short answer to your question, no, we haven't considered those or looked at those yet. Um, and we can talk about that offline later. Sure, but sure, sure. Uh, for GMMs, right, that was just something that were, um, it's particularly relevant to some of the other right, non-machine learning research that we use. And so it was kind of a... Uh, kind of a very clear uh, low-hanging fruit that we just went for there. So uh, yeah, to answer your question, yes, we went to GMMs just because, right, they were already relevant to some other stuff we gotcha, were working gotcha. on. And just a quick question, how fast does it run? Uh, pretty quickly, um, right? This this pipeline that we made is, is pretty well optimized uh, to, right, grab data quickly, do the augmentation. Um, I'd say to do a five-fold cross-validation for one of them maybe takes about, I don't know, uh, something like 12, 12 to 18 hours, which is, is wow. pretty good, so. That's pretty yeah. incredible. <laughs> Thank you.